First, here's this. President Trump's campaign releasing a new ad taking aim at the recent riots gripping the country. Watch this. I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country. Maybe there will be. If this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system. That is what the word radical really means. I've never been offended, and I embrace that term. We need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. All right, joining us with reaction, Steve Rogers, member of President Donald J. Trump for Presidency Advisory Board, as well as John Fund, national affairs reporter and national with review and Newsmax contributor as well. Uh, Steve, first we'll start with your reaction to that advertisement and the role that law and order will actually weigh on voters' minds when they head to the ballots and uh, the polling places in November. Well, the voters made their decision with regard to the topic of discussion regarding this next election, and it is law and order. I can tell you, I've been around, uh, I've been a law enforcement officer for 38 years, but recently I could share with you that uh, no matter what color you are, black, white, or whatever, you want law, you want order, you want to be safe, and the President of the United States is going to deliver on just that. Uh, John, you as well. You know, it's interesting to, to look at the president's strategy in regards to letting this play out or come in with strong force. Either way, we are seeing what could happen in cities where you do take away funding for police and this chaos ensues. Well, certainly the president's appeal will resonate with his base voters. And there's always a rallying around the incumbent to some extent when there's chaos. But chaos in the medium and long run is not good for an incumbent. Uh, people want predictability. And the problem the president has, and I suspect this goes back to a lot of his tweets, is he gets in so many side fights that aren't focused on the main mission that people think things are constantly in flux. And that is not good for an incumbent. Joe Biden has his own problems, don't get me wrong, but the president has to, while having a firm law and order message, has to exude a sense of calm and purpose, and few, less tweeting would help with that. I do want to get your reaction to this breaking news that we've received. The Supreme Court ruling um, on Louisiana's tough restriction on abortion violating the Constitution. It's a, of course, surprising victory for abortion rights advocates. Ruling struck down a law passed by Louisiana's legislature in 2014 that required any doctor offering abortion services to have admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles. Its enforcement had been blocked by a protracted legal battle. Uh, Steve, your thoughts again on this more liberal decision from from a conservative court? Well, look, uh, John Roberts, I don't know what happened to him. The fact of the matter is, is that we have too many activist judges. They're there to interpret the law, not make the law. It's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. But saying that, the president has a plan moving forward, and that's to get more conservatives on the courts. Um, of course, that could be a, a key time in this upcoming election. The next president could potentially be appointing at least one other justice to the court. John, your response to the direction it's going? Well, this particular case doesn't tell us a whole lot because uh, there was court precedent on a similar law in Texas, and the court tends to follow, and it usually does, precedent. So this case in and of itself doesn't change much. Uh, it's a it's a restriction on abortion that is not as important as parental notification or many of the other things that are important. It frankly was a... Uh, uh, a, a way to go around Roe v. Wade by using the licensing law. And I don't think that was it's one of the more effective uh, anti-abortion laws. So once again, though, it does show the direction John Roberts is going, which is in a completely independent path from the other four conservatives. Mm. All right, I want to go back to this photo and video that came out of St. Louis, Missouri. It's when protesters with the Black Lives Matter movement were walking towards the St. Louis mayor's house asking her to resign, and they stopped by this private property. The homeowners coming out, they're armed. Uh, Steve, your response to seeing this video, it's getting a lot of traction online. Well, what's happened across the country is that people are beginning to arm themselves because the Democrats have uh, advanced an agenda to defund and simply uh, take away police departments. So uh, these two uh, people, the video that you uh, 
are making reference to is uh, one of many, many that you can take around the country. Uh, people want police in their communities. Uh, I've got to tell you, uh, there were news crews that went into Harlem. And you don't have the president's base in Harlem, but the people in Harlem who are being victimized every day, like those in Chicago, want police officers. So I hope it doesn't come to the point where people are going to take the law into their own hands. Nobody wins with that. Yeah. But that will only happen if we maintain our police forces across the country. Yeah. And again, that situation, thankfully, did not escalate. Um, but it is interesting and interesting to think about where these voters, who they might have supported in 2016 versus now and how these protests and all this unrest could potentially impact the way people decide to vote in November. Steve Rogers, John Fund, thanks for coming on today and sharing your thoughts. We appreciate it. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Still ahead. Stunning.